So if you didn't already know, Valve is working on something called Full Dive, or at least progressing towards it. And this will be the next version of virtual reality where you actually feel like you're inside a new reality. Think The Matrix. And recently Valve has been making some significant progress towards this future with what looks like their first BCI chip. But this week is packed with more than just Valve news. From the official release of V64 for Quest, a new spatial TV app that gives the same dynamic lighting as the Vision Pro, to apps and games that push the Quest firmly into the next generation. So strap in for this week's worth of VR news. So you probably already know by now, but the Quest V64 update is officially rolling out to all devices. We spoke about this update in detail in my last video, but essentially the most important aspect of this update was the pass-through improvements. We are seeing a load of comparison videos showing off the new levels of clarity. We also got external USB-C mic support and lying down mode. But more importantly, we are starting to see apps and games utilize features from previous updates. One of which is something called a boundaryless guardian system. Some developers of mixed reality apps and games now have the ability to disable your boundary altogether. And one of these games is Drop Dead the Cabin. A new boundary update just dropped. And my boundary previously was only on my living room before, so access to the kitchen on this game would pause the game. As more and more mixed reality games enable this, you could get to a point where more house mapping apps and games are implemented, where multiple floors are possible. The Vision Pro is affecting some of the Quest development, and in terms of apps, we are starting to see clones or similar apps to what the Vision Pro has. One of these is called Spatial TV, and I never really knew how much of a big deal dynamic lighting could be, but this app allows you to slide your environment darker depending on how you've set up your space and you'll get this dynamic lighting effect casted by the video. It doesn't work too well with the new lying down mode as it's clearly not updating to support this, which can imagine could be the case with several games and apps, but it's definitely the best screen inside mixed reality. Spatial TV is still an app lab, but if you'd like to check it out, I'll leave it in the description. But that led me on to another app that is evolving and that's YouTube. YouTube VR now supports 8K inside the Quest, and it's definitely worth trying because it gives you an idea what kind of clarity is possible from within the Quest. Obviously this will actually be 8K, as the Quest isn't a high enough resolution to display an 8K screen within a screen, but it's still good to see older apps being updated. But speaking of older apps and games, After the Fall just received a huge update and that includes a huge quality of life improvement and new horde mode maps. This update is quite extensive, but it's nice to see a commitment to all the games is still there. Also, there are more official apps from Meta themselves, one called Layout, where essentially you can place objects like sofas and TVs or picture frames inside your space and get a relatively dimensionally accurate representation within your space. This is obviously designed to help you decide what furniture would fit where, and at some point, we could have compatibility with companies like IKEA. Would be handy to shop by actually placing and visualizing objects inside VR. Another upcoming unofficial VR app hidden within the strings of the new update is one called Canvas, which by the looks of it could essentially be a notes app. Meta is clearly trying to make a suite of apps that are useful but I prefer if we could focus more on what we have now and try to develop them further. Like there is no reason we don't have an official dynamic TV on Quest, rather than relying on third party apps. But speaking of third party apps, the game Content Warning is getting an unofficial VR port from Flat2VR. And if this is anything like the Lethal Company port, this will be perfect in VR. I just wish we had official versions of the Quest natively because these types of arcade style games are perfect for VR and would bring more users in. But now let's talk about Valve. Valve are probably the most elusive company out there. We never really get teasers or previews of what they are working on. We do know they are making an upcoming VR headset that could be standalone or might not be. But as of now, nothing is confirmed. But what is confirmed is what they are working towards. Gabe Newell, Valve's CEO, has always been extremely passionate about the potential of reading and representing brain data. He spoke on several different occasions on the impact of brain-computer interfaces and how they could essentially lead to the matrix. And in his words, this isn't too far away. Here's a short clip of him basically explaining the potential. Like if you look at VR headsets, any VR headset manufacturer is not at least getting up to speed on these technologies and figuring out how they could apply them. Like, 
uh, we're working on an open source project so everybody can have high resolution read technologies built into headsets uh, in, a, in a bunch of different modalities. And so the question, as soon as you do that, you say, oh, can we give people a tentacle? And you think, oh, brains were never designed to have tentacles. But it turns out brains are really flexible. Your body's ability to incorporate new things into it has to be flexible, you know, because you use tools and you want to use the end of the tool as if it's part of your body. And you, in fact, if you look at the parts of people's brains that light up, it's exactly the same. Uh... What's interesting is Gabe is confident that brain-computer interfaces can solve all sorts of problems, like visual clarity and motion sickness from within VR. Even like he just mentioned, adding extra appendages would even be possible. And this would all be done via a open source VR head strap, essentially. But the future doesn't shape itself, and Gabe actually founded his own BCI company called Starfish, and they recently updated their website to show what they've been working on. And that is a minimally invasive brain-computer interface that allows for neural recording. This is just speculation, but this doesn't look like it's implanted directly into the brain, so that would explain the term minimally invasive. To start, these trials will be for disabled patients, but eventually the data captured will eventually lead us to the using these inside virtual environments. Telekinesis, perfect eye tracking without cameras, or even bypassing the visual system altogether is possible with a brain computer interface. This technology does sound scary, but the potential of a full dive matrix experience is becoming more and more likely, and people like Gabe are pushing the boundaries to make all of this possible. Last up is a few interesting things on Quest. You might know the company Vario for their ultra high resolution heavy price tag headsets. Well, they've just enabled support on Quest for their Reality Cloud system, which essentially allows incredibly high resolution, high fidelity, virtual and mixed reality experiences at a low latency. This is more of a work-related piece of software, but the potential of cloud streaming to VR is the future. And once the latency is low enough, this will be the new standard. But this is the first time I've seen a mixed reality cloud system being implemented on Quest. The other thing I wanted to show you is two new UI methods developers are working on for Quest. This one in particular is emulating the new AI pin, where a projection of the controls are shown on your hand. I think an effective user interface on Quest has been one of the most difficult challenges for Meta, as there really are an unlimited amount of options. But now I'll leave you with some CT scans of the Quest and Vision Pro, but before I go I've started memberships on this channel. And if you'd like to support the content, I'd really appreciate it. And I'll be throwing any freebies I get from companies through to the members. If you liked today's video, like and subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.